Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how group 7 elements form covalent compounds when they react with non-metals. You should then be able to describe how group 7 elements form ionic compounds when they react with metals. In the last video, we started looking at group 7, which is also called the halogens. We find group 7 on the right of the periodic table, and this tells us that the halogens are all non-metals. Remember that group 7 elements have 7 electrons in their outer energy level, and I'm showing you that here with fluorine and with chlorine. In the last video, we saw that, as elements, group 7 form molecules with two atoms joined by a covalent bond, and I'm showing you that here with fluorine. The covalent bond is the pair of electrons shared between the two atoms. We now call this the fluorine molecule F2. All of the group 7 elements form molecules like this, with two atoms joined by a covalent bond. Now here's a key fact that you need to learn. Group 7 elements form covalent compounds when they react with other non-metal elements. I'm showing you here a chlorine atom and a hydrogen atom, and remember that hydrogen is a non-metal. Both of these elements require one extra electron to achieve a full outer energy level, and they do this by forming a covalent bond like this. We've formed the compound hydrogen chloride, and hydrogen chloride is a covalent compound. We can also represent hydrogen chloride by using a stick to show the covalent bond. All of the halogens form covalent compounds when they react with other non-metal elements. I'm showing you here the compound formed between the halogen bromine and the non-metal carbon. And again, we can see that this is a covalent compound. Here's a compound between the non-metal phosphorus and the halogen iodine. And once again, you can see that this is a covalent compound. So we know that halogens form covalent compounds with other non-metals. But what happens when halogens react with metals? Here's another key fact that you need to learn. When halogens react with metals, they form ionic compounds. I'm showing you here the halogen chlorine reacting with the metal lithium. Lithium has one electron in its outer energy level, and chlorine has seven electrons in its outer energy level, just like all the other halogens. A chlorine atom has 17 protons in its nucleus, and each proton has a positive charge. Chlorine also has 17 electrons, and each electron has a negative charge. So in a chlorine atom, the charges on the protons and electrons cancel, and the chlorine atom has no overall charge. When a halogen atom reacts with a metal atom, the halogen gains one electron from the metal atom. So when chlorine reacts with lithium, the chlorine atom gains one electron from the lithium atom like this. The chlorine atom still has 17 positive protons in its nucleus, but it now has 18 negative electrons. Because of this extra electron, chlorine now has an overall charge of negative 1. We call this a chloride ion, and an ion is an atom with an overall charge. When any halogen reacts with a metal, the halogen atom gains one electron and forms an ion with a negative 1 charge. I'm showing you the group 7 ions here and you can see that they all have a negative 1 charge. When halogens form ions like this, the name of the halogen now ends with "-ide". So, for example, fluorine becomes fluoride, and chlorine becomes chloride. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision Workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.